All right, today I'm going to go over making a, uh, a board that you could tile uh, with the same texture map and just change the UVs so that you can get um, a bunch of different boards. And this will all make sense as we, um, we go through it. Um, so the reason that I have this called out like this is because if I bring the UVs over here. How I've set up these UVs is that the top portions of the board are this green area and the side of the board is the blue area and the wood end is this red area. That way that I can select this entire uh, UV shell and I can move it to a new position in the UV grid and with using the exact same texture map uh, I can have a different variation of this board so it's just a way that if I needed a physical board and not just a, um, a textured ground plane with with a bunch of wood planks in it I can make a plank and then I could duplicate this plank many times Okay, so let me open up Photoshop here. So, as you can see, here's the utility node again that I that I built just so that I could see where my UV space was. And this is not perfect. I just want kind of a grid uh, outline for it. So I downloaded this uh, wood planks bear, which uh, from textures.com, which actually really got me very close to what I wanted anyway. So what they did here was they uh, cut out a bunch of different boards and then they put the board ends right next to it so that whenever you lay out this board and unwrap it you could have the bottom part the side the top and then the side again um, so what I did is I took this map and I took a bunch of these board ends that I found on textures.com which is just a bunch of uh, textured ends and I took them all and I put them into Photoshop together so that I put all of the board ends on the side here and they just painted out those areas. So I, I just literally like cut out uh, every single one of these uh, board ends from this other file. Just made like a copy of it and then dragged it into this file. And then I just scale it down for my needs and I just did some color correction to it to get it uh, to somewhere right there so you would just I've done this this these color correction techniques a, a bunch of my previous videos so you can go back and watch how I would um, make that that texture map and then I just applied like a um, a brown uh, color filter to it a photo filter I think it was like this one something like that so you can see kind of like my the idea behind it and then I just duplicated this down and then kind of mixed them uh, together on the side here um, so that there was there are still seams here but you know it, we kind of want to keep each edge of the board in these areas as we scoot it down this UV space and then I just took uh, the flat part of the board. So I, I just have a lot of these. Close them. So I took this seamless uh, wood plank board texture and then I just flipped it and scaled it so that I have one 8K map that has the top of the board, the side of the board, and the bottom. And it just repeats all the way down. So as I move the UV space, I'll actually get different variations of board. And then um, once I had this diffuse, I just went through the same process that I go through and with every other texture I do. I'll just create a spec map, which was, you know, just a hue saturation. And I took the saturation down and then I just did a levels to clamp it just so I could get, you know, some variation in there. Then I made this utility node. Uh, I actually made this utility node first after I, I actually made this. And then I made the utility node and then lined up 
the utility node. That way that I knew how to unwrap the UVs uh, in Maya. So if I uh, go back to Maya, you can see here, uh, this is how I knew where each board was. So whenever I actually cut this board, um, I can actually kind of just show you how my uh, my thought process. Uh, I'll, I'll just go to the UVs and I'll just nuke my UVs. And all right. So to make that, what I want to do is just cut around these edges here. I just cut those and then I cut the other side the same way. I guess I could just do it. And then I cut a seam on the edge and unfolded it. All right. So now I've got the ends here and the board here. I think this is actually turned the wrong way for some reason. Whenever I unfold this the first time, I did the same thing. So what I want it to do is, it is actually like this. So the board is, is flat and I need it to go this way. I don't know why it unfolded it that way, um, but that's the way it did. So now what I do is see I think this okay that's the side of the board so I'm just gonna line these up and this is about half size this is the other side of the board And the way that I line these up is it's just basic UV layout stuff. Um, I'll just do a couple uh, of these just so you can see my thought process. Okay, I just selected that edge and then I did a align and snap and then I just align and snap that all to that edge. And then I just did the same thing for this other edge. Invert that selection, All right? All right, and I just did the same thing all the way down. Once I had that all perfect, then I scaled it to about where it's gonna be and my board edge let's see, it will be about there. this one take this whole thing up to that board edge that way you see over here that first board edge is blue just so that we can get it lined up properly now let's find where that other edge is I think it's right there okay so the start of that board edge is there Then the other side of that is there. So you can see I'm just lifting it up to the edge. And then I want to bring down, scale this board so that it's right at the lip. All right. This is actually, you, you would want to go in and get rid of those skews in the board, like how that was. And then for the ends, you need to find out which way this is pointing. So let's rotate this. Let's see if that's the side. Oh, that's the top. You can see I selected this side. And it's actually selecting this top part. So I actually want to flip it like this. And then scale it. Well, something like that. 
and then from this one do the same thing. Let's let's go. Yeah, it did the same. And the reason I'm setting it up like this is that now that I have them all set, I can now scale them up and down on this tile. And that texture that I created earlier will uh, be able to, to call out individual board textures. So you can see now it, it's not as clean as it should be. This one I finished properly. So you can see everything is lined up uh, and everything is straight so that it lines up on the board perfectly. So I'll just delete this one. All right, so you can see the textures like this. Now let me actually add in the texture that I made earlier so you can see what it's actually doing. So I will delete my uh, template and let's bring in my board tile diffuse. So this diffuse that I made. Okay. All right. So now you can see the end of the board is the ends and the top of the board and the side of the board is all hooked up. So let's pull in, let's see here. Yeah, let's actually pull up the UV editor so you can see what's going on there. There we go. All right. So you can see my UV, the ends of my UV board is here. Like that. So as I move this up and down, it'll give me different variations of board ends so that I can have different boards. And then for this part, this is the whole board unwrapped in the center. Uh, you can see this is an, an edge, or this is a side, and this is a full plank. So um, I can scoot this around. So anytime that I land this section on a side, that should line up with the new side. So I pull this up. That's the same thing. So it just gives me different board variations. That way, not all the boards look exactly the same. So to in practice, let's do a couple of these. So I'm going to hit Control D, which will duplicate it. And I'm just hitting Shift D so that it uh, changes up the variation a little bit. I mean, so, so, so it's, it's a duplicate special. Okay, so I just move the boards a little bit so they're out of sync. But you can tell here <clears throat> that they all have the exact same texture. So it looks super lame. So what we need to do is pull this up. And I want to scale these together. So let's move this down to one of these other panels. So let's pull it down to some other spot and line it up. All right. That's good. Let's select the next one. And let's just, I should have kept these close together so it's easier to move. Okay. Just pick another random spot. Uh, that looks good. And then I'm just going to do the same thing. I'll just move this one up. All right. Mm, that 
think we used this one. All right, so now you can see all the boards are different and they all have different ends. Uh, looks like this one's kind of doubled up. I had f flipped it and just duplicated it. So what we can do is just find a new one. That's good enough. So now you can see we have all unique boards. Awesome. So, and that's just using one texture file. That way you can just quickly build out some boards and like have some variation. You can even set up some parameters and some, some, uh, fancy, uh, drive functions for your UV offset, but that's a complicated video and I probably couldn't facilitate it very well. So maybe when I figure that out, that's for a future video to do some, um, driven attribute parameters. Okay, so let's render that. There's no light in here, so let me make a light. Oh, there actually was. Let's see. Look up. Uh, let's see. this one probably take a minute to load here all right so now we've got that working and that's just super shiny so what we need to do is add in some of our spec stuff so let's Get the hyper shade. Clean this up a little bit. Plank. All right, let's name this. Plank material. Let's get our spec. In there. Gonna make an AI range so I can control that spec amount. Name these blank. Just did a uh, isolate select on that board. Let's get some of our AOVs active. So I'm going to open up my render settings, go to AOVs, built in, and I'm just going to put in diffuse direct and indirect. Oops. And my specular direct and indirect. Okay, awesome. You can still see it's super shiny. It's not necessarily what I want. So let's select that. I'm just going to increase the roughness. You can see what it's doing here. Probably good for now. One thing that we need to do is let's add in our displacements. Okay, so get my the shading group for that plank. Plank shading group. Create the file texture for that, and we'll call this plank disp shader. And I 
will attach my disk broad first. And I'm going to actually go ahead and bring in my disk fine as well. That way we just have it ready. All right, and then I'm also going to bring in a plus minus average node. And a luminance conversion. Make things easier. That way, if I want to check in each individual one, I can just connect it. And if I want to check the final output of all of them, I can check that too. So let me name these. This is this broad. This fine. All right. Let's hook up that plus minus average in the first node, and my plus minus average for the fine or the 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 disc broad goes in here, and then the uh, disc fine. So plus minus average disp plank disp and the final conversion. Let's just see what we get out of the box. Oh, one thing we got to do. All right. Totally messed up, but the reason is that we need to add so if we go to the plank and we go to the plank shape node we need to turn on subdivisions and displacement attributes so let's do cat clark let's try 3.5 and i just need to quickly do that for all of them so i'll just go through and do it probably should have done this before I duplicated it. There's actually a way to drive parameters um, before whenever you attach a material. So I was just reading about it in the documentation today. So on the solid angle website. So I will actually put a tutorial together for that because I want to teach myself because um, that would be extremely useful to be able to drive the subdivision amount for a bunch of objects at once. Okay, so I had to stop the video and fix some of the seams that I had here in the texture that I originally made. Um, I cut them, I think I originally cut them like around here, something like that. And it was giving me some weird uh, displacement uh, stretching. So what I did is I re uh, UV the boards and I cut them about here so that there's one edge loop around. And it seems like it pretty much cleaned up my displacement issues that I was having. So if we zoom out here, the board was kind of like folding in, uh, folding in and under itself. It was doing something weird. So now I've got uh, all these boards working and they're all offset uh, like we talked about earlier. And let's see, so here's my diffuse and my specular. And we have the displacement broad and displacement fine uh, working as well. If we look at it here. Okay, so. All right, now that we got everything working, we've got these boards and we could make a bunch more boards um, but let's just keep it uh, simple for now and then we can add in some different levels of variation for each one of these boards just so you can see uh, what we can do with it okay let's see let's pull up the hypershade All right, so, so far we just got our diffuse, our spec, and our displacements plugged in. 
That's the only thing in there. So let's add a paint. So we'll do an AI standard surface. Do paint material. And let's just make this like a, a really pale blue stain. I'm gonna turn up the roughness to make it pretty rough. Oh, I just closed that instead of minimizing. All right, we'll call this paint. And then we want to make a paint wood mix. All right, let's make an AI mix shader. And I'm going to call this wood paint mix material. All right. So now we need to load in both of these materials. This one and this one. All right. I'm just going to hit three, shrink them. And we need to bring in our plank displacement shader from over here so we don't have to recreate it. Uh, just name this shading group. Okay, so now we need to plug in a control signal for this wood. So Actually, I didn't actually make one, so let me pull up the Photoshop file. I can just make something quick. I was just messing around with stuff earlier. Just gonna flatten my spec. And I'm gonna do a levels and I'm trying to get like a, a paint, a worn paint signal. So I kinda want the black areas to be where the paint still is and the white areas to be where the paint is worn. Try something like that. Save this out. We'll call this board tile paint control. All right, so let's pull that in. Do a file texture. Source images, paint control, here it is. All right, I'm gonna do luminance conversion, just in case we need to mess around with that a little bit. All right, let's see what we get. I need to apply that material. So I will assign existing wood paint mix. Let's load that. All right, so now that's loaded. So we they have this uh, light blue wash that's being broken up by that signal that we made. Um, let's darken the paint color so you can see it a little easier. Let's go to the paint. What you can actually do is just make a ramp. So just 
Make a constant. Just in case I want to drive this later by some weird means um, through color corrects or something. Uh, let's do like a maroon. All right. Let's make that paint even. Uh, that's pretty rough, actually. Make it look really dry. And what we could do is do a color correct on our mix node. Look at that. Some of our paint CTL. Give an AI range. And we'll do isolate select. Okay. Start messing around with this. You see, we can real time push that paint around. Cool. And one thing you'll be able to see is if we make new boards, let's uh, just create a new one over here. It'll be duplicated right now and it'll just be exactly the same as one next to it. Looks really bad. And but it has everything added to it. So what we can do, we can just go that duplicated board. We can go into its UVs and just change its position. And it will have a brand new board texture. And we're just sliding it up in the, uh, I guess this is U or V, either one. It's this way. All right, so let's play that. And you can see, I think we could probably even shift it in real time to see what we're getting. So let me line it up on one. There we go. All right. So now we have a paint mixing on these boards, and they're all uh, tiling different versions of this one single 8K map that we made um, so that we can just kind of kit bash uh, a bunch of boards together. And what you can do is like once you have these boards, you can do some like nonlinear deformers and stuff like that to really add a lot to them. Uh, let's try that on one of these. Do a bend. Rotate this the right way. Obviously not that extreme. And I wanted to add like a cup on some of these. Let's see. This often happens to wood boards that have been aged.
These nonlinear deformers are awesome. And you can actually, you can leave the deformer on there if you want and then uh, modify it later. But if you're done with how it looks, you can just um, delete the history and it'll delete the deformer. All right, so let's see what that looks like with them a little bit bent up. Just adds a bit more character. All right, so I guess that's good for this one. A uh, good way to uh, pump out a bunch of different boards uh, with one single texture map. Um, and just to get some nice variation. All right, I'll see you in the next one.